Hi everyone, welcome back to our second segment after the keynote section. So uh, he come uh, to our section talking about the enterprise and API. Uh, we are really glad to have um, a speaker, Emin, uh, uh, from AWS. Uh, actually, he will be talking about the go to market with APIs. So um, yeah, okay. Hi you, hi are you, Emily. I'm wonderful, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here at API Days Hong Kong. Yeah, thanks for that. So I know that you support from uh, different time zones, so really happy to have you. So let's try to see the screen um, on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see your screen there. So, and your voice is loud and clear. So I will pass the time to you, thanks. Thank you so much, Patrick. Hi everyone, my name is Emmeline Wong and I work at AWS. It was not too long ago that I was very likely in your shoes at a company that builds software to manage APIs, integrations, and the next product platform and its associated APIs. I'm grateful to Patrick and the B Novelty team for being such great hosts to the API community. Today, I kick off the enterprises and APIs track with this session about what it means to go to market with APIs and why APIs are key for a smooth long-term go-to-market strategy. I'm going to start with something that is very interesting, right? The field of developer relations has really matured. And so what does DevRel dream of? So if you are in developer relations or you're a developer advocate, it's very likely that today you really want to focus on building interesting products and be involved in projects and influencing technology choices. And it's very likely that you're finding and adopting technology that makes life easier for everyone. Um, I really miss the days when we were together and doing hackathons, but I've been really enjoying um, doing virtual hackathons where Many times you'll see hackathon teams use up to 40 different types of technology to build a project where half of them might be new as they're building that hackathon product. And there's a trend that I'm seeing across the board that developer relations and business development and sales are actually a team and they're able to reach the customer exactly where the customer needs information to, to make that list of the technology they're trying to choose a little bit shorter. Um, and the developer relations team really cares about establishing credibility and happy customers. And why is technology choice so important? So whether or not you're a developer or an analyst or a CMO, it's really important that you're able to try new things very quickly because rapid innovation is what is going to set you apart and be able to deliver value to your customer a lot faster. The more that you're trying things, the more you're testing out what works and what doesn't work and getting that feedback and iterating and making what you're building better. A couple of months ago, I ran a quick Twitter poll. I was interested in the topics of API management and which ones were really important to you at the time. So the pulse really shows that monetizing APIs is really important to you. And that is that still stands today. So when I talk about go to market with APIs, I'm really um, addressing that particular topic. So think about it this way. Today, you might have X amount of users on your API or your platform, and you're trying to get a handle on which of these users, for example, are part of the companies that you're really trying to reach so that you can deliver better support. So what's a model that actually works in this way where you can have this type of attribution? So with the AWS marketplace, there's ways to meet the customer where they're at. So today, if it's an existing customer, they can bring their own license and move that workload to the cloud. Um, many people come to the marketplace to have a free trial of the product that they're looking for, as well as being able to use a pay-as-you-go or a monthly or possibly an annual or multi-year subscription. And then what happens is, um, say you see kind of that digital storefront and you wanna negotiate a better deal, then there's the vehicle called the private offer. 
where um, you can negotiate custom terms and conditions. And so the reason why that's incredibly important for developer relations and sales and business is now you're really going together to work with customers. So AWS Marketplace was actually designed so that customers would uh, make it easier for them to find um, independent software vendor solutions and services that are um, built on AWS, for example. And so maybe you're looking for something that's for your DevOps uh, lifecycle or to modernize the way that you develop applications, or maybe you're interested in reaching a specific vehicle that is just in industry. And so we have 50 different categories where, where um, customers can search for those solutions. So that previous slide, um, if you're familiar with the API ops methodology, Hopefully that just reminds you that it's really important that all stakeholders are kept in mind when you're designing an API very quickly and with meaningful data. And the reason that I mean that is later I'll show you that when you go to market with APIs, it's, it's very typical that you might be integrating with an API to help um, your go-to market go faster or to increase the capability of what you're trying to do. And so the long and short of it is that to reduce the pain of that integration, it's really important to properly design that API, even if you do have a low or a no code UI. Um, this way, you're still able to get the functionality that you need and basically meet all of the different stakeholders. And let's connect this sort of go-to-market idea with where you and maybe where your customers are in um, cloud adoption. So specifically, as you look to moving more of your workload to the cloud and moving up the stages of cloud adoption as depicted by the green and blue curves on the left, you also want to be moving up the maturity curve and how you procure, provision, and govern third-party software and data solutions, which is shown on the right, which is kind of like a brown or orange curve. This capability, which we call modernizing the software and data supply chain, is highly synergistic and complementary to your overall cloud adoption effort. So the reason I mentioned that is as you mature as an enterprise, it's really important for um, there to be streamlined procurement as well. And so that's where Marketplace helps. So today, if you're an ISV, you should do a search to see if customers can actually purchase your product through the AWS Marketplace. And if not, then you can actually list your product in the Marketplace. And then as mentioned, right, there's the self-service model, if that's what you choose. Um, you can match how you go to market today, or if your product is a high-touch product, then you may want to use the private offers mechanism, which is on the back end of that product listing. So I recommend that you start with how you go to market today and match that in Marketplace. So just to give you an example, say your product is uh, of the SaaS listing type. So meaning um, it depends on how your customer wants to deploy your product. So if it's a SaaS model, then um, we actually created a serverless integration application where it makes it easy for your product um, to be sold to the customer where your product becomes a line item on their AWS consolidated bill so they can see the ISV products and services they've purchased along with which cloud native um, AWS services they've purchased. And so as you can probably imagine, the VP of procurement is very grateful for that same thing with engineering because they can kind of see the tech stack and you know how much that they've purchased and the reason why they would want to purchase your particular product through the marketplace is they get to save a lot more money and i'll show you some specific examples of why that happens so what we're typically seeing today is that um, you can choose for example if you want a low or a high touch sales vehicle and you can design your product listing on Marketplace to meet that. So if you know you're meeting developers and developers want to be you know, super hands off when uh, you know, as far as uh, marketing or sales touch, then you can really build in that self-service subscription or say it's consumers and analysts 
you know, the general public that typically purchase your product, then self-service is great for that. However, individuals and organizations, especially where procurement is possibly very complex, can actually reduce that procurement, the time for them to purchase by using the private offer mechanism. And so I'll actually show you some specific examples of what this particularly means. So what it means is that today we have you know, quite a bit of data that shows us how much of the IT budget is software, where um, these very large types of um, you know, the heavy lift that you see on the top, there's only kind of a few ISVs that offer those solutions. But the, the magical spot, right, where companies and organizations are really looking for not only what they currently purchase today to be able to purchase that through marketplace, but also to be able to discover new things. So, you know, I love certain music platforms that allow me to discover new music that's a lot like the style that I do. So you can think of AWS Marketplace as the same thing. And typically companies are purchasing one to 10,000 licenses. So you can imagine that they really want a streamlined way to be able to get to your software. So I was really excited last week um, Trend Micro hosted us to do a marketplace immersion day, and um, they were able to report very recent results the next day, right, where they've got 177% sales growth by using marketplace. So can you imagine a company that has a developer relations team, sales, business development, technical pre-sales, where it's this kind of report, right, then you can see that there's quite a bit of celebration. And so I also wanted to address the point I mentioned earlier, right, where the head of cloud service operations at Software AG talked about how they were able to purchase software and support services through the marketplace. And so just being able to save 50% in procurement versus the traditional way that they do that. The other piece that's really important is um, consulting partners or the channel. So it's very likely that a system integrator or global system integrator is managing the AWS account on behalf of your customer. And so they're really able to do the um, consulting partner, channel partner, private offers as a way to bring together the triangulation of a managed service provider, you the ISV, authorizing that consulting partner to sell your product to the customer. So that piece is really important. So I'm gonna take that same triangle and now invert it. So you kind of saw, you know, kind of what people are buying. Now this triangle, when I turn it on its head shows, well, who's buying, who is, you know, who you're trying to reach through marketplace, right? It's, it's basically a multifaceted sort of marketplace where there's many different roles. And so the word customer, right? It could be an ISV that's a seller, or an ISV that's a buyer. And so the reason I mentioned this is, um, this is exactly how you're able to reach, right, the developers that are with maybe the top companies that you're trying to reach because they're able to use Marketplace to purchase at scale and to influence those larger buying decisions. So now I'm gonna flip it over to more of the buyers um, even though we have buyers in every vertical, I'm just going to focus on financial services and healthcare and life sciences, since I saw that today there were, you know, many different financial services companies presenting at um, API Days, uh, you know, in local to Hong Kong. Um, and so I just wanted to go through that. So in the same session that I did with Trend Micro, the CTO of Bank United, Mike Lembeck, talked about how um, they're really able to use Marketplace as a buyer and to just have a much more sophisticated workflow and approval process, especially since, you know, they're able to buy at scale and even use the private AWS Marketplace for more governance. The other thing I was going to mention is, um, especially selling to financial services, uh, security is really important. And so just like you want to go to a trusted source to buy software, um, AWS Marketplace, for example, if the software is an Amazon machine image um, listing type, um, those are being constantly scanned. And so it, it really just helps um, ISVs 
who are um, sellers and buyers to have a very good experience when it comes to financial services. Um, Ellie May is, um, is owned by an, an international holding company where um, they're really selling these kind of mortgage products and other financial products. And they were able to purchase App Dynamics and able to get to um, production a lot quicker. And then Ajiro um, has a, a really awesome sort of platform and solution that insurance companies have been purchasing at scale. And Ajiro does quite a bit of purchasing through Marketplace as well. Um, because they're able to just streamline billing so that they can focus more on innovation rather than procuring. And then Baobab is a, is a really neat company um, that is a digital financial inclusion company that focuses on serving individuals, micro entrepreneurs and small businesses in Africa and China. And so they were also able to realize production uh, and, you know, cost cutting by procuring through marketplace. And so that was something that was really important to them. And then I also just wanted to show you two quick examples of buyers in healthcare and life sciences where um, Greenway Health, which is a Vista Equity owned company, um, was able to easily have partner onboarding through AWS Marketplace by purchasing um, MongoDB and New Relic. And the main reason is they had the shortcut because MongoDB and New Relic, which are available on Marketplace, are already you know, certified by their um, preferred cloud vendor. And so it just makes it really easy for Greenway Health to, to know and you know, have trust that when they purchase these solutions, um, it's a good experience. And finally, I was gonna you know, talk about how informatics, uh, bioinformatics, um, you know, they were able to uh, improve their analysis and speed, which is of course very important in, in the culture that we're living in today um, by purchasing Illumina. And so, you know, what we're trying to show here is, um, yes, it's very well that an ISV can sell directly and that's wonderful. However, when it comes to marketplace, it just gives everyone some clear benefits. And also, um, the whole point of private offers is it basically helps you to close the deals faster, as well as possibly to increase the deal size. So that piece is really important. So as you start your marketplace journey, whether you're looking to buy software and um, services or you're looking to offer them, make sure that you make it available in the way that you know that your customer wants to um, find it today. And um, the best part is we call it a day one service. So it's deployed in 24 regions and that sale that you make is still directly with you and your customer. Um, and also we're continually growing the selection in all of our 50 categories and we're just really excited to work with you. So I specifically manage um, full lifecycle API management, integration platform as a service, and low and no code um, software providers through Marketplace. The other thing I was gonna mention is, um, you know, we don't just have software and services. There's also third-party data, machine learning algorithms, et cetera. And this is kind of our mission that um, as a leading Marketplace, we're always looking to improve um, to serve the partners and um, you know customers that we work with. And I couldn't be here if it weren't for all of the ISVs that I just um, talked about where we've got over 310,000 active customers, 6,000 ISVs and over 700 um, SIs, GSIs and channel partners around the world. We're so grateful and I hope that you'll check out their solutions and feel free to connect with me um, if you have any other questions about this deck. And so I am going to see if Patrick had any questions. And okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing, Emily. So sure. yeah, I, I just see in the questions. So 
Yeah, uh, you, you, you did mention about the AWS marketplace. And then uh, in Hong Kong, we have a lot of audience. So we are more on the maybe regulated industry, especially from financial services. So can you share a bit uh, maybe how the marketplace, uh, especially the AWS marketplace, can help those partners to, to tackle or so lower the barrier in the regulated perspective? Absolutely, Patrick. That's a great observation. So the one way that marketplace really helps highly regulated industries. So for example, public sector, some public sector entities will only purchase through AWS marketplace. And so if that's the case, then, then, you know, that's kind of an important event, right? That, that the ISV will be able to learn that, oh, you know, the way that they streamline their procurement is by purchasing by our particular services, and um, for example, support packages, training, certification, um, value mapping, et cetera. Anything that you would typically sell today, you can offer on the marketplace. And it just makes it a lot easier for the highly regulated industries, especially since, right, it cuts down negotiations and many times you're able to bypass the RFP. So those are all ways that, um, that we're able to help anyone that's working with highly regulated industries. Mm, okay, so we, we got another question here is talking about, so I think we, we have um, quite a lot of experts in here is talking about the API and also the data. So people want to um, actually sell more to different region, etc. So I can, uh, we can see that the best marketplace can help that. Is there any best patterns that you may recommend? Maybe one or two tips uh, for those um, as we, they want to um, onboard or even leverage the, the, the technologies to, to, to sell. Uh, in, in, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Patrick, thank you for that question. So what I was recommending earlier is that it's really important that you go to market in marketplace the way that you would today. So one key question you can kind of ask your own company is what percentage is direct sales versus what percent goes through channel and what percentage is, you know, kind of self-service. And you can basically start with those motions on marketplace where you're already successful and then you can use marketplace to grow your footprint into maybe countries or areas where you're not currently in. So thank you, Patrick, for the opportunity to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's all from uh, the question from the from the audience. So uh, once again, fans are aiming in to share about the uh, the thoughts from uh, AWS, and then hopefully the the tips uh, can help some of our audience in Hong Kong to see how can they uh, penetrate their offering uh, to different uh, places, etc. So fans again, aiming in. So thank thanks you, for Patrick. Support. Have okay, a great event. See you in Hopkins. Okay, see you soon. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye.